Okay, here we're going to program up the IRB360, which is a, a little uh, pick and place robot. So we start off with an empty station, press create. In here, then you add in your IRB360. There you go, it's a parallel robot. Just pick up the standard size and modify, set position, and position it up 1650. Apply and close. Now we need to add in a controller. So we go to virtual controller from layout, pick up the 6.11.02 uh, robot wear. Press next, next, into the options, and some of the options we need here, into industrial networks, we need a device net, master and slave, and then down to packaging, scroll down to the prepare for pick master and power pack, so pick on the 642-1 pick master 3, and we'd like two conveyors, and then we would also, we also need to include an input-output board for the conveyor. So we'll select one local input output based device and press OK and then finish. Now that the controller has um, installed and booted up, we can go to our add ins, click on picking, and essentially what we do is we work through the different um, functions from left to right, make our way along here. So the first thing we need to do is add a picking controller and our controller is number six. Yours might be number one or two, depending on how many times you've operated, or you've run this type of scenario. So here I have my robot and I have the two conveyors. Press OK. Next up, what we would like to do is to add the vacuum uh, gripper for the end of the two, for the end of the robot. So we Click on the vacuum gripper, select the defaults here are fine for us, press OK. Next up we add a conveyor, conveyor, and we'll select the smart component com, com, uh, belt conveyor, so SC belt conveyor. Again we can select the defaults here, they're fine for us, press OK. And we can put in the position here at minus 2000, that's minus 2 meters, and apply. Next up, uh, we can add the second conveyor. So we go to conveyors, again the same conveyor. It's automatically indexed the name, so it's conveyor number two. Press OK. And again, we put that in at minus 2000. And this time we'll offset it in the Z uh, minus 400. And apply and close. So now we have the two conveyors side by side. Now we need to specify the work areas in the conveyors. So conveyor work area, and again, it's super convenient here. It's already selected controller number one, robot number one. That's been associated with the conveyor, with the board, uh, CNV1. And it's selecting the conveyor and it's setting out the work area as a pick type. So we're going to pick from this um, conveyor. The signal configuration, we're using the default, and just simply press OK. Do the same again, select work area conveyor, and you can see how clever this is. It's all, so it knows we're still talking about controller one, robot one, but now it's indexed to the second conveyor, and the second conveyor it's defaulting as a place conveyor. So it's very convenient, and again it's configuring the I.O. on that conveyor. Press OK. Next up, I'm going to add a camera. So I'm going to add the uh, Basler Scout camera. Select that. So at the moment it comes in, it's not attached, but I would like to attach it to conveyor number one and press OK. Bring in the second camera and again, attach the second camera to conveyor number two and press OK. Now we need to add a flow handler. So we click on the conveyor and 
What's going to handle the flow here is the camera and it's going to set up as a distance trigger. So again, they have a nice default here set up. Uh, sometimes you might have an I.O. input coming on the conveyor and you can use that to set it up, but uh, we'll just, again, click on the defaults and it again sets up the signal configuration. Press OK. So essentially what's going to happen is the camera is going to detect an object and then the conveyor output is going to send an output to the robot to trigger it. Again, conveyor handler. This is for camera 2. Work area on conveyor 2. Again, press OK. So now we need to set up the items and the container. Now the item is the item we're going to pick up and the container is the, um, the pallet or whatever that we're going to put it onto. So let's add a cylindrical shape here. I'll just put the label on the up, upside of it. And apply. Now click on add a container. And the container, the default again comes in here. 200, 200 by 50. It comes in with its own name, but you can um, change that if you like. We'll just name it palette. Apply and close. Next, we need to specify the patterns that the parts are coming in and the pattern that we would like them to be placed in on the container. So we go into container pattern. Click. No, so the container we're looking for, this is my uh, container. So the object coming down. So I'm going to add this in here. So add item one. That's it. And there it is. Add it. So I can go to uh, the layout and it's asking me how many uh, parts are basically going to come down the, the conveyor. So I'm going to put two side by side uh, and this is the coverage, so it'll be 10 coming down. Add that to the selected layout. And you can also go to layers here. If you want to um, layer, uh, oh, sorry, let me add that to selected layer. You can see the two items here, which are going to be placed onto the container. But if you want to go to layer, you can layer them up. So if you want five of these little cylindrical disks stacked on top of each other, you can add them in here by adding in the different layers. So we can apply that and close. Next up, we need to specify the job. So we add in a job, add an item. So here we have the workflow, then the, the conveyor handler, and we want to detect this with a camera, camera one essentially, and then pick it up, and then place it onto conveyor number two. Again, apply. Now we want to add the container pattern. So the container pattern, essentially we will have just the camera 2 detecting the, the pattern. So apply and OK. And now we are ready to calibrate the system and then press start. So click on calibrate, the controller will be restarted, OK. And once that's complete, then we can press start. There's the robot moving into its home position. And here are the parts arriving. And it's doing its best to uh, give us the pattern that we were looking for. So there's two on each. If you want to put four on each, um, you may have to put a second robot uh, in line with the first uh, to give it the extra capabilities but it's fulfilling the task of putting two on each of the uh, containers so that's it. I'm just going to stop that now if I go to the wrapper tab and the you can see the the wrapper code here so for example here is the the main code 
um, you can see the, the subsections in the code. Um, so here is where you may want to modify the, the program or fine, fine tune it. But essentially this is the code that you would save and download to your robot. So what we're after doing here is after saving you all the hassle in writing this, this code out, okay? So I hope that was helpful.